Welcome back to Boomi Essentials. So now I'd like to take some time to talk about what a connector actually is. The start shape is a mandatory shape that automatically populates itself into any new process. One thing to keep in mind is this is the only shape that cannot be deleted. Now a start shape can be many different options, which are listed horizontally at the top of the dialog box. For our particular use case, we want to make that start shape a connector type. We also have a separate shape called a connector shape as well. So let's briefly review the concepts of a connector. A connector is the main component containing all of the information needed to connect to a data source or application. The connector is made up of two components. The first is the connection itself, which represents the physical connection information, or essentially the where. The second component is the operation, which is the function to call or the files to act upon, or you can think of it as the how. Atomsphere contains a library of connectors within the shapes palette to provide access to an infinite number of software systems and data standards. The first type that we have are the standard or generic connectors, which are commonly used in file integration where you need to get or send data to or from a common data repository, such as a network share or an on-premise database. These connectors also support the connectivity over communication protocols like FTP or HTTP. We also have application connectors, which refer to the packaged integration services where there's a branded Atomsphere connector. These are available in our community, allowing you to perform actions by calling the system API of the software product. You can review the public connectors available in your account by opening your start shape and expanding the connector dropdown. The list of connectors here is a small sample of the many connectors available to you. If you'd like to see a full list, simply click on the Connect category within the Shapes palette. Since we need to retrieve the documents from our FTP, we're going to need to set up an FTP connector shape. Let's discuss the core options of the FTP connector, which will help configure our start shape. It's the main component containing all information needed to connect to a single FTP server. And like any connector, it's a combination of two components. First, we have the connection, or the where, which is the FTP server hostname and user login. The second is the operation, or the how, which is a get or send action along with the subdirectory and file filter definition. In order to start things off, you will need to create a reusable FTP connection component. Here's a breakdown of what each connection option does. First, we have the host, which is the host name, IP address, or the domain name of the FTP server, which is where the FTP application resides. In our case, it's ftp.boomi.com. Next is the port, which is the FTP server port, which listens for incoming client connections. The default port is 21. Next is the connection mode, which is active or passive. This is essentially how the FTP client initiates both connections to the server, solving the problem of firewalls filtering the incoming data port connection to the client from the server. Passive is the more common of the two that are used. And finally, we have the username and password, which represents login information for the account on the FTP server. Keep in mind that this connection is a component, which means that once it's created, you can reference it in other FTP connector shapes rather than creating a new one. We'll also need to change some options within the SSL options subtab. So once selected, the new options appear within the connection window. First, we have SSL mode. You have the options of selecting none, explicit, or implicit. These are the methods for invoking different types of client security, and it basically enables the ability to support FTPS. And lastly, you have the Use Client Authorization checkbox. If it's checked, this will enable the client certificate import and definition if the FTP administrator requires it. So now that we've taken a look at our FTP connection, let's take a look at our configuration options for our operation. First, we have our FTP action, which you can select get or get and delete. 
Essentially, this will retrieve the files and defines an optional delete command. Next, we have the remote directory. This identifies the subdirectory if the FTP user needs access deeper than the base directory. Next is the file filter, which locates files based on a pattern matching using the file name. You can use wildcard characters such as the star or question mark to create file name patterns. You also have the transfer type option, which transfers files as text or raw data respectively. And lastly, you have the max files to read, which sets the maximum number of files to read at once. The default value for this is zero, which equals all.